Highway 16, a series of cases that belong to this nightmarish highway. This episode will go into further depth of an individual who went missing or was murdered on Highway 16, with my every hope that they will one day be solved so that families may rest in peace. I'm Justine, and today the case from this dreadful highway I will be speaking of is Ayla Sarek Oger, a girl not too much younger than me, but who faced a fate so unhuman-like and unimaginable. Stick around to learn more on this. Introducing Ayla. Ayla Sarek Oger, a 14-year-old girl, part of the Cree Nation, born on December 30th, 1991, a tragedy that was never closed. Ayla was a young, cheerful, kind, and a happy-go-lucky type of girl, as her friends, family, and school staff described her. She was your typical teen trying to have fun and make friends. Ayla previously lived in Alberta, where she was born, but had somewhat recently moved to Prince George, British Columbia, sometime around 2004. She wasn't well known, and she didn't know many, but she had a good group of friends who she hung around. Ayla went to D.P. Todd Secondary School and was well liked by students and staff. She would volunteer to support the school office and was a very supportive student. She even took on a kindergarten buddy to mentor, which shows how compassionate and loving she was. Those two soon formed a strong relationship. Ayla lived with her family. There isn't much information about a father, but her mother, Audrey Sarek Oger, was a present parent figure in her life. Audrey did have history of alcoholic tendencies, but not enough to be seen as a problem to the girls. She also had two siblings, Kyla and Tim, who had nothing but good memories of their dear sister. The family belonged to the Lady Tanae Nation, which translates to where the two rivers flow together, which I find quite beautiful. Not that it's an important fact, but the two rivers they speak of are the Fraser River and the Chaco River, and that was their main source of drinking water in Prince George. Thursday, February 2nd, 2006. Ayla and her two siblings, Kyla and Tim, headed to Pine Center Mall, which was about four kilometers from their home, and at the time was the largest mall in Prince George. While at the mall, Ayla and her sister ran into some of their friends and left with them. After the two girls had tried to persuade their brother to come with them, Tim decided to not follow along and went home without his two sisters. Audrey did, however, tell the police during the investigation that Ayla did ask to go to a friend's house for a sleepover, and Audrey allowed it. There isn't many proven events that occurred that night, but it's sure that the young pe- the young group of girls had a couple of drinks. During that time, Ayla and her sister were separated. Kyla arrived home the next morning, safe and alive, expecting her sister to have, to have arrived earlier, or at least arrive soon. But Ayla had not come home that night, or the morning of. Friday, February 3rd, 2006. As soon as her mother felt something was off, Audrey Sarek Oger went to the local police station to file a missing persons report. The police told her she must wait 78 hours to see if Ayla would show up, since her initial thought was that it was a runaway teen who was out with her friends. That same day, it tried to retrace Ayla's steps from the night before, but didn't have much luck. February 6th, 2006. The family officially filed a missing persons report four days after Ayla went missing. Her family searched all over the city, reached out to all their friends, family, and hung up posters all over the city. Audrey had also thought that Ayla could have been waiting in a business somewhere, since it was winter and it's warmer to be inside. Audrey even went out of her way one day and went to all the local businesses around their home and around where Ayla was supposed to be staying for the night to see if Ayla had been camping out there, but nothing she did led to any clues towards finding Ayla. What the police did. Besides having the original thought of this case just being a runaway teen, they did do some investigation to find Ayla, but nothing they did solved anything. They had spoken to some of the friends that Ayla and her sister were with the night that she went missing and found out that one of their friends claimed she saw Ayla get into a black van with a person that was unknown to their friend group. While the police investigated, they suggested that Ayla had gone to a friend's house to get a ride home. Supposedly, the friend's mother was unable to drive her home and not wanting to call her mother as a 14-year-old girl who had been drinking it that night would. She was seen walking in the direction of a home that was known to have drug dealers hanging around. The police investigated a dozen people that were known to hang out around the house, but they were all clean in the case. The police also did some digging for the surveillance, ca- surveillance cameras around the area she was last seen in and found two recordings where you can see Ayla clearly. The clearest recording was a video of Ayla walking in the re- direction of her home, and it was a camera of a Save on Gas bar, which was located at 2100 block of Kinsey Street and passing the Save on Gas around 1 a.m. February 10th, 2006. Almost a week after Ayla was last seen, a motorcyclist was driving down Highway 16 near the Tabor Mountains when he noticed something in the shallow ditch on the side of the road. 
He was in the outskirts of Prince George when he stopped his bike and called the police since he was concerned about the body-looking shape that he saw. When the police got there, they carefully examined the area and investigated the body in the ditch. The body laid near the road, as any passerby could easily notice it if they were looking in the direction. Which makes me wonder, whoever left it there didn't care so much as to cover up their crime. What they found could be seen in every mother's nightmare. A young girl's body, completely unclosed and all personal items stripped off with them. With nothing but a necklace hung around her neck, the police identified the young girl's body as Ayla Saragoger, and her mother later said that the necklace that she was left with was one that she had given to her, her daughter. Police indicated that the cause of her death was blunt force, blunt trauma force to the head. There was no proof that there was any sexual assault on Ayla, but since she was found completely stripped of clothing, it sure is a possibility. Even if the police wanted to examine her body to search for any sexual assault indication, her body was badly decomposed since being left on the side of the highway of a ditch. There was nothing else found in the area, nothing to understand how or why little Ayla was murdered in such a brutal way. Highway 16 in Epana. Unfortunately, this wasn't the first victim who had been found murdered on the side of the Highway 16, which is now referred to as Highway of Tears since there have been so many young women found alongside it. In fact, the government had created an RCMP task force named E. Pana, which was specifically created to investigate the series of unsolved murders along the Highway of Tears, including Ayla's case. As said in their website, E. Pana's purpose was to determine if a serial killer or killers is responsible for murdering young women traveling along major highways in British Columbia. Ayla was the second youngest murdered victim found on Highway 16. The police claim that there have been 18 deaths found along this highway, but indigenous families believe that the number of cases that belong to this highway are way more, but claim the government lacks effort to investigate more cases since no bodies are found for them. So depending on who you ask, 18 to 83 deaths along this dreadful highway. Out of the 18 cases the RCMP officially recognizes as death, 10 of them are indigenous. Audrey Sark Oger. Oger. Audrey never gave up on the search for answers of her daughter's brutally done murder, even years and years after her being gone, which I think is very dedicated and showed how much she loves her daughter. She also started out to set, she also started a new walk called Highway of Hope, which was to raise awareness to her daughter's murder along as, as all the other women who have gone missing and murdered along Highway 16. Unfortunately, Audrey, a loving mother, was part of a vehicle collision on Highway 16 and passed away tragically. She now lays with her daughter, and they are reunited once more. The Highway of Hope walk still continues to this day and raises an immense amount of awareness to the subject. Forty-first call to action. We call upon the federal government, in consultation of Aboriginal organizations, to appoint a public inquiry into the causes of and remedies for the disproportionate victimization of Aboriginal women and girls. The inquiry's mandate would include 1. Investigation into missing and murdered Aboriginal women and girls, and 2. Links to the intergenerational legacy of residential schools.